gravel and adventure bikes like this lovely specialized S-Work Diverge, not sponsored, have come a long, long way in a few short years. In the beginning, they were nothing more than modified slightly cross bikes with the bigger tires they could fit for the US gravel racing scene where this gravel category was really born and made as popular as it has become. But then manufacturers and bike designers responded by merging the best bits of the off-road capability of a cyclocross bike with the geometry and other features from an endurance road bike and then blending in some mountain bike DNA as well to create bikes like this that we have now. And through that period of development, which I've been closely watching as a bike journalist, we've seen lots of new developments and new products and innovations brought to bikes. Some good and some not so good, it has to be said. So in this video, I'm going to share what I think are the five best tech trends in the gravel bike market at the moment and the five not so good tech trends in the market at the moment, using this bike as an example. Now, I do encourage you to let me know what trends you agree with or disagree with by leaving a comment down below. By far and away, the best tech trend to come to gravel bikes has to be clearance for very wide tires. Wide tires are good for comfort, whether you're riding on gravel or broken road surfaces, and are good for traction and control when you're riding off-road in the mud or dirt. This bike has clearance for up to a 45 mm wide tire, making 40 to 42 a good option, which is fairly standard in the gravel bike market at the moment, but it can go much wider. You can also go down to a smaller 650B wheel and go up in tire size if you want even more volume, and even more cushioning, and even more comfort on your gravel bike. That wide tire clearance also gives you the option to fit mud guards with fat slick tires, giving it a really good all year round option for road and off-road. Gravel bikes have given us super low ratio and super wide range gearing, available one by as we have here, or two by if you prefer. No more grinding up hills on massive race inspired gears. We now have the proper gears we need for riding off-road, but also good for riding on the road if you don't have supreme levels of fitness. A controversial one this perhaps, but gravel bikes have, from the outset, embraced hydraulic disc brakes. Disc brakes bring numerous benefits. Firstly, they increase the tire current by removing the rim brake caliper restriction, and then the brakes themselves give more power, more control, less maintenance, and much longer paddle life. So all good things that you want on a bike design for riding through dirt, mud, snow, gravel, and lots more. The geometry of a gravel bike brings together the best of a slightly cross bike for off-road ability and ground clearance, and then the stability from an endurance road bike, and increasingly a bit of mountain bike inspired geometry as we have here with a longer reach and a shorter stem and a slacker hand angle. What these bikes give is super stable handling, really relaxed at high speed and on loose gravel, and much less twitchy than super agile road race bikes. That makes them great for riding off-road, but also great if you're new to cycling, you want an accessible and easy to ride bike for the road, for the commute, for club rides, and much more besides. One of the biggest appeals of a gravel bike is the sheer versatility they offer. They can easily be adapted for just about any type of cycling. From pure gravel and off-road riding, as we have here with knobby tires, as wide as you can fit, to road riding with a fast, slick tire, winter riding with mud guards, commuting and touring with racks and panniers. You can do just about everything on these bikes all at the same time with different tires and different wheels and a few changes here and there if you need to tailor it to different types of riding. That really is one of the big benefits of a gravel bike over a pure road bike or a pure mountain bike. Drop a seat post like this one here where you can adjust the height of a saddle by flicking a lever on the handlebar are a common sight on mountain bikes. In my opinion, they are an essential product on a mountain bike when you are descending to increase your capability and control. But on a gravel bike, in my experience so far, they aren't really that necessary. And if you are riding the terrain where you need a dropper seat post, you probably will be better off on a mountain bike. And for me personally, that's a line, a distinction between a gravel bike and a mountain bike. If you're using a dropper seat post, you're probably on the wrong bike. 
One of the most obvious technologies being brought over from the mountain bike world onto gravel bikes at the moment is suspension. And suspension, while it can add comfort and control and traction, does add complexity, weight, and expense to a gravel bike. And we see many different solutions from the Future Shock here to the RockShox suspension fork and many other systems. But it all add complexity, weight, and expense. And in many people's view, gets away from the purity, the simplicity, and the easy maintenance of a gravel bike. As with suspension, electronic gears and batteries add needless complexity to a gravel bike. And when you're throwing the bike through mud, dragging it over mountains, loading up with luggage and riding for weeks on end, having electronic gears and batteries and go flat, it's adding further complications to a bike that is all about the simplicity and the purity and that easy maintenance when you are in the middle of the jungle, the desert, the mountains, with just a small allen key to fix your bike and get back on the route. Gravel bikes are developing at a rapid rate and they've changed a lot in a short amount of time. In the early days, they were nothing more than rebadged slightly cross bikes, but they are now starting to diversify, which are a good thing or a bad thing, depending on your view on the bikes at the moment. And we've been here before, of course, with mountain bikes, when in the early days, a mountain bike was a mountain bike. But now there are 15 different types of mountain bike, from short travel cross country race bikes to amazing downhill bikes and everything in between. And the same is happening with gravel bikes. So at one end, you have aerodynamic race focused gravel bikes. And at the other end, super capable, super versatile, bike packing focused bikes, and then lots in between, like the Diverge with suspension and other features. While on one hand, this diversification is a good thing for choice. On the other hand, it makes it confusing to a new consumer coming into the market, trying to choose the right bike for the riding. And it has to be said, with all the technology, big tires, disc brakes, suspension, electronic gears, and dropper seat posts, are you, at the end of the day, better off with a mountain bike? A hardtail mountain bike can be cheaper than a gravel bike like this, with a longer travel suspension fork, and bigger tires, and a longer drop post, and wider handlebars for more control, and better riding when you are riding off-road. Although they're not quite versatile or capable for mixed terrain riding as a gravel bike. But if you are riding off-road, a mountain bike, it could be argued, might be a better choice. There we go then, five of the best and five of the not so best tech trends currently seen on gravel bikes using their specialized Eswitz Diverge as an example. And it will be interesting and fascinating in say five years time to look back at this video and gravel bikes from this era and see what has changed, what tech trends have stuck and which haven't stuck and see where they are and how they look. Um, at the moment, I don't have a crystal ball so I can't predict what direction they will go in. But I guess mountain biking in the way that had developed is a good example of where gravel bikes might go, especially in terms of diversifying in different directions to suit a wider range of gravel cycling as the, the category and the sport generally is maturing into different directions, bike packing, racing. We've got the UCI World Champs next year as well. So that'd be an interesting impact on the sport and bike design. Anyway, that is all for now. If you want to check out 10 of the best gravel bikes currently available on the market, then click on this link up here. And don't forget to subscribe by hitting this button up here. Anyway, that's all for now. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you all again very soon.